So welcome to um, this socially distanced RESPO works demo. In this demo, we're going to demonstrate pressure assist mode. So we've got Edwin here in his lab, and we have the test lung set up in pressure assist mm -hmm. with a sort of long mandatory respiratory rate, and also a high PIP to PEEP uh, difference so that you can see this kind of obvious breaths happening. So all the breaths that are happening right now are mandatory, except just now Edwin squeezed a little ball and he triggered a patient triggered breath. Go ahead and do that a couple more times so we see it. Yeah, in the absence of a trigger, the, uh, the ventilator will initiate an apnea breath on its own um, after a uh, six second uh, respiration cycle. But we can be triggered early by the inspiratory effort simulator here on the quick one. Yeah, so that's how it works in um, watching it. And you can see it reacts very, very quickly. But we also wanna show you what it looks like with the actual readings from sort of internal ventilator state to show you how the algorithm for triggering works. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start recording some data from the vent. And we're going to let it just do a couple of apnea breaths first so that we can see what the baseline looks like. And then we'll do a few triggers. And we'll do triggers at different times in the expiratory phase so that you can see uh, the difference when it's being triggered. And we'll finish off with one more apnea breath. So what I'll do now is I'm going to unpin this video. And we'll switch to screen share so that I can show the data while Justin walks us through how it works and what the ventilator is doing. Okay, Justin, the data is yours. All right, um, so there are four lines in this and I always like to start by explaining what the different lines mean. So the two simplest lines to understand are these blue and orange lines that are mostly tracking each other down there. So yeah, thanks Edwin. Um, so the blue line is the pressure set point in the ventilator. This is the pressure the ventilator is trying to achieve. We're in pressure assist mode. So the ventilator, it seems like has a five centimeter peep and a 30 centimeter pip. We set those big differences just so you could see it when we were demoing it, the test lung moving um, a lot. So the blue line is the pressure set point and the orange line is the achieved pressure. So that's just kind of normal stuff. The thing that's of interest here are the two other lines, the green and the red line. And these are the two lines that we're using to trigger, um, to trigger a breath, to detect inspiratory effort. So actually, Edwin, can you zoom into one of the ones where we're actually doing inspiratory effort and then we can come yes. back to ones where we're not. Yeah, so this is an example of inspiratory effort. So what happens is the, we keep two rolling averages of the measured flow. And we're not graphing flow in this chart just because we can only graph four things at a time. But also when you add flow in here, it starts getting pretty noisy and difficult to see. But this red line, we've marked it as the slow flow average. Um, and this is an exponential moving average that updates relatively slowly. And the green line is a fast flow average. It updates more quickly. And you can see in this range between like 11 to 12 seconds, exactly that happening, that the green line is more, is moving around more than the red line. And then right here at a little bit past 12 seconds, uh, you see this big spike in the green line and a comparatively small spike in the red line. Um, and that's us detecting inspiratory effort by detecting the difference between the fast flow average and the slow flow average. And so the way the inspiratory effort detection algorithm works is it just looks for a large enough difference between the green and the red lines, between the slow average and the fast average. And Edwin, if you zoom out a little bit, we can see how big this signal is, is huge. Yeah, so the red line ends at like 45 centimeters and the green line ends at 200 centimeters. So uh, you can't miss it in the data. And um, even though, you know, at some other point, so I'm seeing here at like about 16 and a quarter, 
the green line does go over the red line, like th that signal is much easier to filter out because it's just much smaller than this giant signal we get when we see inspiratory effort. So one other thing I want to highlight about this is just how quickly the algorithm reacts to this. So if we zoom back into this sort of like 12 to 12 and a half seconds, we can get a sense of how quickly after the inspiratory effort begins, do we trigger the breath? So yeah, Edwin will zoom in so we can get some numbers, but it's like 100 milliseconds. What is this? Yeah, so we're looking at the right here is where the, uh, where the breath takes off, right? And here is where the machine responds. And so we're looking at something uh, like about- 50 milliseconds. Yeah, 12.11 12, 12 uh, seconds, and it responds at 12.16. So yeah, about 50 milliseconds here. And we can go ahead and look at one of the other traces just to show that that's consistent. And so here we have the breath starting at about, about just over 22.5 seconds. Let's, let's actually zoom in a bit further. Here, we can see it take off at about 22.53. And by 22.58, the machine has responded by increasing the pressure set point. And then the, the physical pressure follows shortly thereafter. Yep. Uh, that's the data. Is there anything else we want to point out here while we're on the plot? I think that one other thing I want to point out that we've built is not actually completely relevant to um, inspiratory effort detection, but just that we've built a really powerful debug interface. And it's exactly what we're using here to see internal state in the ventilator. So this isn't stuff that we would ever plot in a user interface and show it to respiratory therapists, but it's obviously really important to us as the developers. And being able to just kind of zoom in and save these traces and play around with it has been really powerful and something we're pretty proud of. That's it. Yeah, I'll, sorry, go on. That's it. Yeah, I, I wanted to add to that that uh, what what's also incredibly powerful about this debug tool is its test automation abilities that we can run scripts that uh, set uh, will will uh, deliver a, a certain uh, sequence of settings to the ventilator and record the data in a consistent manner, and that uh, us being able to do consistent testing and collect data in a consistent manner is ex absolutely critical to what we're trying to do. So uh, uh, I too am very proud of the effort that the software team has put in to create this incredible tool. 